good morning everyone so um this is the 212 general cytology and histology so uh for my topic i'll be taking us on cell cycle cell theory and cell communication so for this lecture um we'll be taking cell cycle and then after we'll go to cell theory and uh, cell communication in our next lecture So what is actually cell cycle? And I say that it is an orderly series of events that takes place in a cell as it grows and divides. Okay, so there are this cell cycle has two major phases. You have one the interface and the mitotic phase. So it's important to note that a cell spends most of its time in the interface. So um, many people refer to this stage. As the resting stage of the cell but the cell is not actually resting it's taking its time to prepare for the cell division so there are three major events that um, occurs during the interface stage and these are one the cell takes its time to grow two is it replicates its chromosome and three is that it prepares for cell division. So in exam, if I ask us what are the three major events that occurs within the cell during the interface stage, just tell me that cell growth, uh, replication of the chromosome, and uh, uh, preparation for cell division, okay? So uh, for the mitotic phase, the major things that occurs there is the replicated DNA from the interface stage and the cytoplasmic contact are separated and the cell begins to divide. So of course in mitotic phase from what we did in our year one or even in secondary school, there are series of uh, stages in mitotic phase. You have the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase and then the telophase. So these stages are what we are going to be seeing under the mitotic phase. Then it's also important to note that the resulting cells are known as the daughter cell and each of these daughter cells will enter their own interface and begins and begin a new uh, round of a cell cycle so that's why it's called a cell cycle It's a continuous process it doesn't end it's continue it's in continue okay so we'll talk about stages of the interface one there are three stages of interface the first is the G1 phase, or you call it the first gap. You have the S phase, or the DNA synthesis. And lastly, the G2 phase, or the second gap. So there are things that really, um, things that occur in the G1 phase include one, um, there are little changes that is visible, okay? So mainly in the G1 phase, the cells are quite active at the biochemical level. So the cell is more uh, busy accumulating the building blocks of chromosomal DNA and the associated proteins. Uh, it also uses this um, period to accumulate enough um, energy in order to replicate each chromosome in the nucleus. Of course, you know that cell division um, has to do with um, a lot of energy. So the cell in G1 phase takes its time to accumulate, to build enough energy for the tax ahead. So for the S phase or the DNA synthesis, the DNA replication results in the formation of um, identical copies of each chromosomal sister that are firmly attached at the centromere region. Okay, you now have the two centrosome will give rise to the mitotic spindle. So is this centrosome that is actually needed for cell division to occur because they are the one that will give rise to mitotic spindle. Mitotic spindle are those um, thread-like uh, structures that hold the chromosomes during the cell division. So you have the centrosome, which are consist of a pair rod-like centroids, and these are at right angle to each other. It's also important to know that these centroids help organize um, cell division. So for the last phase, for the last phase, which is the G2 phase or the second gap, 
what really happens here is that the cell replenish its energy synthesize the protein necessary for chromosome manipulation and some cells organelles are also duplicated so some of the cells organelles that are duplicated is the mitochondria of course is the powerhouse and much energy is um, required for this process another one is the endoplasmic reticulum which is also um, required as well so also the cytoskeleton is dismantled to provide resources for the mitotic um, spindle and finally there may be additional cell growth so it's not a must but sometimes there may be um, a cell growth so now looking at the mitotic phase here um uh, the mitotic phase can be defined as a, a multi-step process during which the duplicated chromosome are aligned separated and moved to opposite poles of the cell and then the cell is divided into new identical daughter cell so this is what actually happened in mitotic phase so there are There are two stages of mitotic phase. One is the mitosis, and the second one is the cytokinesis. So, mitosis is divided into series of phases, and these are the prophase, the prometaphase, the metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, at the completion of the telophase, they will now have the cytokinesis, which results in them having our two daughter cells. Okay, so let's look at what happened to the prophase. So, at the prophase, the chromosome condense and become more visible. Okay, unlike what we will see in the interface, remember there are two phases interface and the uh, mitotic phase. So, in the, at the interface, the chromosome are not that visible. They are not visible so the only thing that uh, really occurs in the interface is what biochemical the cells are active at the biochemical level but here in the prophase there are some things that are now becoming visible under a microscope like the chromosome condense and become more visible then the spindle fiber emerge from the central cell so in the exam i can ask us um uh, during cell division at the prophase or during cell division which organelle or which um what give rise to the formation of spindle fiber so during the cell uh, division that should give rise to the formation of the spindle fiber so of course you should know that is the centrosome so centrosome uh, the spindle fiber emerges from the centrosome and uh, the nuclear envelope breaks down okay nuclear envelope breaks down and another one is that the centrosome moves towards opposite pole and then you have uh, the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum fragments dispersed to the periphery of the cell um, another one is um, the centrosome begins to move to opposite poles of the cell so of course um, you know this um, exam question is going to be subjective so I I employ you to read in between lines in order to ace your exam. So you have to pay attention to the um, smallest detail if you actually want to pass this course because some things are really confusing in these um, um, stages of the mitotic division. So like I, I said earlier, the central soul is what gives rise to the spindle fiber and then in prophase, chromosome condense and become more visible. So let's look at what happened at the prometaphase stage. So here, the chromosome continue to condense. Then, uh, the remnant of the nuclear envelope disappear, the, and the mitotic spindle continue to develop as small microtubule assemble and stretch across the length of the former nuclear area. Um, each sister chromatid attached to spindle microtubule are the centromere so via a protein complex called the kinetochore so this kinetochore appears at the centromeres yes so looking at the metaphase um, 
uh, chromosome are aligned up at the metaphase plates. So uh, if you, I will still show us the picture. You can see during the metaphase that all the chromosomes are aligned in a plane called the metaphase and plate. And then the sister chromatids are still tightly attached to each other. They are yet to separate and the chromosome are maximally condensed. Okay. Then this is what happens at the metaphase. Then for the anaphase, the central male splits into two. So this chromosome that are tightly held each other at anaphase, they split into two. Each chromatid, which is now called a chromosome, is pulled rapidly towards the central male, the central zone to, to which its microtubule was attached and becomes more visibly elongated at the non ketechal microtubule slide. So the uh, at anaphase, this uh, chromosome separates and they, they are being pulled um, opposite each other. So what happened at the telophase is that the chromosome reach the opposite poles and begin to decondense. Okay. And uh, the mitotic spindle are broken down into monomers that will be used to assemble cytoskeleton components for each daughter cell. Then the nuclear envelope forms around the chromosome. So the mitotic spindle begins to break down because it's almost coming to um, an end of the cell division. And then the spindle fiber continue to push poles apart as well in telophase. So for now looking at this um, diagram, looking at this diagram, you can you can you can you can see the prophase level. You can see the chromosome condense and become more visible. And then the spindle fiber emerge from the central zone. Nuclear envelope breaks down, and the central zone moves towards opposite poles. You can see what happened at the prometaphase, the formation of the spindle fiber from the central central mass. Okay, and then uh, for the metaphase, you can see how the chromosome. Wow, you can see how the chromosome are aligned at the metaphase plates. They are aligned at the center and each sister chromatid is attached to a spindle fiber originating from the opposite pole. Then for the anaphase, you can see how this um, chromatid has been splitted into two and each spindle fiber pulling each chromosome to the opposite direction. So this is the major thing that occurs at the anaphase. Why at the telophase? The now continue to um, rebuild themselves like the nuclear envelope which disappear begins to form again to surround each cell of chromosome then the chromosome arrive at opposite um, poles and begin to be condensed trying to give rise to the first stage which is the prophase then the mitotic spindle begins to break down so the mitotic spindle begins to disappear and then the spindle fiber continue to push poles apart in order to get to the extreme. So, um, you know, I told us in mitotic phase that we have two stages. I have the mitosis and I have the cytokinesis. So in cytokinesis, what actually happened, although cytokinesis is similar in all uh, eukaryotic cells, but it differs between animal cell and plant cell. And the differentiation is that in animal cell, a cleavage furrow separates the daughter cell. You can see uh, the uh, the cytokinesis. Why in plant cell, a cell plate that's the precursor to a new cell wall separates the daughter cell. So in exam, I can ask us what separates the daughter cell in an animal cell? Just a cleavage furrow. Okay. Why in plant cell, the precursor to a new cell wall? Is what separates the daughter cell okay so please take note of all this this is how um, your questions can come in so you need to really read in between lines okay wow so so looking at the cytokinesis uh, this is the second part of the mitotic phase you remember so during this period the cell division is completed by the physical separation of the cytoplasmic components into two daughter cells. Like we saw in our diagram, uh, you can see the animal cell completely separated 
by the um by the uh, cleavage flow why that of plant cell is being separated by a precursor uh, a new cell will separate the plant cell all right so i said that the cytokinesis is the second part of the mitotic phase which uh, cell division is completed by the physical separation of the cytoplasmic components into two daughter cells. And remember, I said that it differs, although it's the same for most eukaryotic, but for plant and animal cell, it um, kind of differs. And we have already seen um, the reason or the differences in plant and animal cell. Then another thing to note in uh, this cell cycle is that protein plays a very important role in cell division, and these proteins can be divided into into four groups. One is the growth factors. Second is the growth factor receptor, and uh, signal transducers, and the uh, nuclear regulatory proteins or the transcription factor. So of course, one will ask, how is this protein formed? Uh, first, the DNA is being transcribed to an RNA. So the process, of course, everything will not be in my notes. So, so far I said it in my lecture, I can also ask it in the exam. So the process by which uh, DNA is converted to RNA is called um, transcription. Now, when this um, RNA is now translated to become protein, so the process of turning uh, uh, an RNA into a protein is known as translation. So it's through translation that we get these proteins. So in the exam, I can ask us the process of uh, converting DNA to RNA is called dash. The answer is transcription. Why the process of converting RNA to protein is called translation. So we we'll now talk about steps involved in stimulating signals to reach the nucleus and turn on cell division. Of course, cell division don't just occur. There are communication that uh, happens within the cell. And you know, one of the topic I'll also be taking is the cell communication. So there we'll be discussing at length what really happens. So um, there are some steps that must occur before a cell division can be turned on. And one of them is that a growth factor must bind to its receptor on the cell membrane. Then, the receptor must become temporarily activated by the binding event. Activation must stimulate a signal to be transmitted or transduced from the receptor at the cell surface to the nucleus within the cell. And finally, the transcription factors within the cell must initiate the transcription of gene. Okay, must initiate the transcription of gene. So these are the four factors or the four major steps that must occur before a cell division can be turned on or before a cell division can start. Okay, and um, that's it for the cell theory. Um, that's it for the cell cycle, sorry. So in our next lecture, uh, we'll be talking about um, cell theory. Thank you.